Thank you so much, Bonnie. That is very, very, very helpful information, isn't it? We will all be prepared, right? Now let us prepare ourselves for worshiping the Lord with our gifts. Our distinguished choir is going to lead us and prepare us, and then, after they have sung for us, the ushers will come and wait upon us, and then we will sing the doxology choir. Now the ushers will come and wait upon us.
step. Talk so. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us pray. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. For all that we have is thine alone. A trust, O Lord, from thee. We pray that you will accept these gifts that we now present from grateful hearts. As we give thee thanks for all your blessings on us from day to day. In the name of Christ, your greatest gift of all to us. In his name we pray and give thanks. And we all say, Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 41 through 50. And I think you'll find this a very enjoyable, familiar um, scripture. The Philistine, Goliath, came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God of Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear for the battle is the lord's and he will give you into our hand when the philistine drew nearer to meet david david ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the philistine david put his hand in his bag took out a stone slung it and struck the philistine on his forehead the stone sank into his forehead mm and he fell face down on the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine Goliath with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. That's a marvelous story, isn't it? And I hope and pray that you will read the rest of the story, read the whole chapter of First Samuel 17, so you'll see the background and the context leading up to this climactic segment that Bonnie has read so beautifully for us. And now the gospel reading. So you know, I invite you to participate as you stand and as the ancient saints in the early church did in honor of the gospel reading. We'll read from Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 29. And you'll read alternate verses, right? Thank you. When James, Peter, and John 
came to the other disciples. They saw a great crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. They were immediately overcome with awe, and they ran forward to greet him. He asked them, What are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him blind. How can he hear? How can he speak? And whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, you faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw Jesus, Immediately in con it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the Father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. It has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us, and help us. Jesus said to him, If you are able, all things can be done for only who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, after crying out and convulsing him terribly it came out and the boy was like a corpse so that most of them said he is dead but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he was able to stand when he had entered the house, the disciples asked Jesus privately, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, This time it can come out only through the prayers. Friends, this is the gospel reading of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us, we pray thee, so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be well-pleasing in thy sight, for you are our strength and our salvation. Amen. The text for today comes from the Gospel reading that we have just participated in, the verse 23 of Mark chapter 9. Jesus said to that Father, All things are possible to those who believe. And the subject comes from the Old Testament reading, Quoting David, the battle is the Lord's. Well, let me begin by asking you a question. How can I make real for us all as we gather here in Lely today the powerful promise of our Lord to that desperate father of the epileptic son and how can we appropriate for ourselves the faith in God and the self-confidence that young David exhibited to all Israel who were terrorized with fear and anxiety about the dread Philistine 
the giant Goliath? How can we make that come alive for us today? And the answer to my rhetorical question is the only way I know for us to do that is to come to terms with the demon of doubt and fear up front and personal. Now as we move towards doing that and get practice in doing that, I need to remind you this morning that the experts say that there are at least three types of doubt and fear that we will face in this life. First of all, the fear that is practical. Secondly, fear that is paralyzing. And third and last, fear that is productive. And remember, the experts tell us, again, that we are born with only two types of fear. Fear of loud noises and fear of falling. So all the other fears that we acquire in this life come from different sources than our birth. Keep that in mind. So first of all, I want to talk to us this morning about fear, practical fear, fear that is practical. You and I know that if you commit a crime and you get caught and you go to trial, it is just practical to fear that your prayer for exoneration will make little difference, will it? Whether you have a lawyer or not. To hope for a miracle in the jury room is like driving down the highway at speeds of 150 miles an hour and pray and expect that you won't crash, right? It is like sleeping through the entire semester if you are a youngster. I know none of you ever did that. <laughs> sleeping through the entire semester in school and praying right at the end, the last day of the exam, that you will pass your exams. It won't work, will it? What I'm saying to us this morning is that it is practical good sense to have fear and doubt about becoming a professional in life or becoming a spiritual giant if you refuse to pay the price of discipline, study, and preparation. That's what I'm talking about. For example, if you want to excel as a pianist like the great Barry Davis here, you won't make it if you refuse to practice every day, right Barry? If you're a Christian and you want to grow in maturity in the faith, you have to read your Bible and you have to pray regularly. You know what I'm talking about? The church grows by cultivating leaders with mature faith and a vision for what God expects us to accomplish by cultivating that kind of a faith and maturity of understanding and vision of what the Bible expects of us and what God is calling upon us to do in this world as God's representatives. So Jesus said to the desperate father, to the disciples then and to us now, all things are possible to those who believe and those who behave as though they believe that God helps those who help themselves. Right? That desperate father didn't just sit alone at home wallowing in self-pity. He got up, he heard about Jesus, he took the boy, he took his boy filled with epileptic disaster to the disciples first, and you know the story, and then to Jesus. He did something about his circumstance, for God helps those who help themselves, right? That's what I'm talking about. 
It's a practical thing. Secondly, I want to talk to us this morning about fear that is paralyzing. Ask us, how many times have you heard people say, we can't do anything about our situation? Public education in Florida is hopeless. As to criminal justice in our country and in our world, forget that. How churches function in these Bible Belt areas of our country is anything but the salt of the earth and the light of the world, right? And yet, you say, seeing that, we will never be able to change anything. I know nobody at Lely ever says that. So paralyzed by doubt and fear that feeds on its own self-fulfilling prophecy, we are like David's older brothers who just dismiss his boldness and his daring to take on, to think of taking on that great giant of Goliath. And they just called him as they looked down their noses on him, young and teenager though he was, that he was brash and arrogant and immature, and he was doomed to failure. That is fear. That is paralyzing. And so the question for us, I'm asking us at Lely this morning is, are we forgetting Christ's teaching that all things, all things, not some things, all things are possible for those who believe instead of paralyzing themselves with doubt and fear. That's the question I'm asking us this morning. And last of all, there is fear that is productive. Mark says Jesus and his three disciples had just come down from the great mountain of transfiguration. They had that awesome experience and the moment they came down from having that awesome experience of the divine with Elijah and Moses and the shadow, you know the story, overshadowing them, and the voice coming from out of the shadow saying, this is my beloved son, pay attention to him. And the moment they came from that awesome experience to the bottom of the mountain, they ran to a man who was at his wit's end because his son was about to be destroyed by this demon of a neurological condition called catatonic epilepsy. So the father complained bitterly to Jesus and he said, those disciples that you left down here when you went up to the mountain of transfiguration, they're not worth a die. And now, here is fear with a future. Here is fear that is productive. The father is speaking and he says, Lord, I don't want to judge you by your disciples and I don't want to get my hopes up too high because I've had such bad experience with all kinds of people, especially your disciples that you left down here. But, he said to Jesus, if you can do anything, have mercy on us, I pray. And Jesus got into the conversation with him, and he said, did I hear you say, if you can? Do you know who you're dealing with? It's not the disciples anymore. And he looked at that man straight in the eye, and he repeated and said, if you can. For it's not really up to me so much as it is up to you. For all things are possible to those who put their trust in the God who has got the whole world in his hand. And immediately the man got the point and he cried out and said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. What he was saying was, Lord, I have faith in your compassion and in your capacity to heal and to help, but it is mixed up with a little doubt and fear. And of 
I fear that I'm, I'm going to be made a fool of if I throw myself on you and your disciples haven't helped. But since you say all things are possible to those who trust in the faithfulness and the compassion and the love of Almighty God, please wipe away my fears and doubts that are mixed up, paralyzing me, and make my fears and doubt disappear and make them all become productive. That father was not disappointed, says Mark, was he? And you and I won't be either when we entrust ourselves, body, soul, and spirit to the Lord of all help and healing and hope. I say that because the same thing happened to David, the shepherd boy. Because, as you remember, his brothers, the older ones who were in the battle already, looked at him and said, oh, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. But you know the story, how it ends, don't you? I'm saying that David, the shepherd boy, tells us that all things are possible to those who put their trust in God. I remember Bishop Tutu when I visited them in 1979, and I remember the story of Mother Teresa. That is because of their testimony through their life's work and what they did in spite of their circumstances and all the challenges that they faced. They believed with all of their heart that all things are possible to those who put their trust in Almighty God. So that David, David, that youthful shepherd boy, was there facing the giant called Goliath, nine feet tall, the legendary man, hero of the Philistines. And he had every reason in the doubt to fear that he could prevail against such a giant. But listen to faith and trust in God at work. David said to that giant as he faced him, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God, of the hosts of heaven, the armies of heaven, and I am going to show you today that the battle is the Lord's. It's not up to me, it's not up to us, with all our numbers, the battle ultimately is the Lord. And that is what I believe. And that is what is going to make all the difference in our encounter. And that, my brothers and sisters, was his secret weapon. The power of positive thinking. The power of trust in God who's got the whole world in his hand and makes everything that we do possible when we entrust ourselves to God. Is that what you believe this morning? Yes. In all your ways acknowledge him. And don't lean on your own understanding, says the Bible. Trust yourselves to the Lord for the battle. No matter what you're facing and fighting against, the battle ultimately is the Lord. Let us pray. We give thee thanks, O Lord, that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Shed the light of heaven upon us now as we contemplate your word and continue to think about what you have said to us this morning, about our fears and our anxieties and our need for trust in thee, thou who art the faithful one. Hear our prayers of thanksgiving as we entrust ourselves into your loving hands, we pray thee, through Christ our Savior, and let us all say, Amen.